number two on their 2021 tour, Peter Biondo and Kyle Seipel took their Spring Fling brand of bracket races to the Galat Motorsports Park for the Rad Torque System Spring Fling, presented by Optima Batteries. With a gorgeous weather forecast on their side, the drag racing dynamic duo welcomed over 300 racers and their machines for big paydays, product giveaways, and the race it experience at Vibe. Action began on Tuesday with the ROMS Automotive and Collision Center Test and Tune Session and the Mullis Race Cars $20,000 Shootout. In the quarterfinals, Bo Butner and Chris Reynolds met up first with Butner taking the win, Clayton Roberts beat Will Holloman, while Tim Thomas earned a spot in the Final Four after Tim Quentin's red light. Cameron Manuel sped past Ken Batchelor. In the semis, Butner met Batchelor. Beautiful. I believe that's a Jaron Settles paint job right there, Mike. Yeah, um, Jaron Settles will be teaching a finish line driving seminar here relatively soon. We 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 love we we love him. We can get him. All right, he he's been hated on enough for that, unfortunately. So let's focus on the race here. All right, stage lights are on. Tree drops. 11,000 separate him. Top end, wind light goes to Cameron Manuel. 11, dead two on the 438 dial. Bo was 22, take six to be 15 thou under. Cameron Manuel was 13 total. And then Thomas and Roberts faced off. Left side, Tim Thomas, 466. Thomas Car Sales and Repair. Cameron Manuel was up on the wheel there for Butner. That's solid. for sure. So Tim Thomas gonna be alongside Clayton Roberts. The runner out of Benson, North Carolina, the race tech dragster. Trying to represent Team Galat Motorsports Park. Make it down to the final round alongside Cameron Manuel. 449, the dial for Clayton. will be leading second for Team Robco Residential and Southern Tide Holmes. 3,000 difference on the starting line. Clayton, Tim. How about the local guy? Dead zero. And 009 makes nine total for Clayton Roberts. Tim Thomas was 12 green and dead on five, 17 total. And Clayton Roberts has been down this racetrack a time or a thousand. Their Marco is 009 on the starting line and 4490. And we'll have a Clayton Roberts camera manual. Final round. The Mullis Race Car shootout. For the final, it was Manuel and Roberts. We started with 32. Marco Paravalaris that paid $1,000 to get into this deal. And we went from 24, we went from 32 down to 2. It's Cameron Manuel, Louisville, North Carolina, 439 the dial for Cameron. He'll be over on that first Federal Bank side of the racetrack. Right side, Clayton Roberts, 448. Local out of Benson, North Carolina. Both drivers from North Carolina. Both have been on their game today. Yeah, Clayton Roberts had lane choice. He picked the Napa Auto Part side, put Cameron over in the left lane. They're in and they are ready. Here we go. Five thou separate them. Both drivers double O. Wind light, Clayton Roberts, double O eight, dead one, nine total on that 448 dial. Cameron Manuel, how about double O three, take 11 to be five thou under, needed six thou or less, wow. All right, whoa, hey, let's hold this over here because it's really loud. We'll start off our Rad Torque System Spring Fling presented by Optima Batteries here at Galat Motorsports Park with our winner of our Mullis Race Car Shootout, Clayton Roberts, who we joke around every time that you come up, I always say that, you know, that you literally could drive this dragster here to the race instead of having to tow it. Really, how far from this racetrack do you live? Uh, we live about 15 minutes. Uh, so you literally could drive it if you wanted to. Good. Put a little bit of fuel in it. So I, I just want to go back to the semifinals, right? You got Tim Thomas. 
you just like really, really mean to Tim and go nine total, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I just kind of looked up on that one. No, I knew I had to be good against him. He's always uh, tough, so I knew I had to be there. And then, yep, and then you have Cameron Manuel in the final, and you're like, okay, you know what? What I did against Tim Thomas, I'm just going to do to you too and go nine total in the final as well. Yeah, I mean, it felt good, so why not repeat it? <laughs> it felt real good. So, you, 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 you've had a lot of success here at Galat Motorsports Park through the years, but how much does it mean to win a big race like this here at the Mullis Race Car Shootout? 32 outstanding racers in this deal. In the second time trial session, I don't know if you heard when me and Marco Paravillaris were talking about it, of the 32 cars that went down the track, 14 of them were double O green. That stacked field to come out with a big win here tonight. Yeah, I mean, it was tough. Um, I knew everybody was going to the game because you know, I saw the list and saw we were in there, so I knew I had to be ready for it. So it, I mean, it just feels delicious. Finally get this, you know. <laughs> it feels delicious, but uh, I've been close so many times and Know, things it didn't work out, so it's kind of like it's good to finish it off. So, good start to the weekend. You know what? You can't win them all unless you win the first one. Exactly. You got to start it out right, and that's what I want to do. Come out here and start the weekend out right. All right, big round of applause for guys literally right down the road. Clayton Roberts, our winner tonight. That Mullis Race Cars 32 car shootout. FST Carburetors was the sponsor on Wednesday for a $15,000 payday. In the quarterfinals, it was Donnie Burleson beating Jerry Bula. Chris Galitti advancing by way of Shane Thompson's 2000s breakout, Kevin Brannon making it past Mike Bodner's 005 breakout, and the last match of the round saw John Laboose making it past Tom Dauber. In the first semi, it was Galitti and Brannon. Yeah, Galitti's been loving the left lane. Brannon's been loving the left lane, but this time the Monza is closest to the tower. 557. The dial-in for KB, 451, the dial-in for Galitti. Fourth thou, the split at this end of the racetrack. A quick tap of the brakes for Kevin Brannon, but cannot stop the breakout, and it is a double breakout. Then it was Burleson and Laboose. Breakout, one thou. Kevin Brannon was 16 on the tree, gets there first by six thousandths of a second and breaks out three thousandths of a second. So Chris Galitti will make it an all dragster final, claiming the first of the two available spots. Brannon again, 16 green, getting there first, six thou, breaks out three thou. Galitti gets there second, breaks it out a thou. And Galitti will come back to take on whoever wins this pair between Luce Caboose and Donnie Burleson. Burleson dialed 452, Caboose dialed 458. It is a 20 thou split between the two of them and Donnie Burleson puts up a perfect reaction time. For the final and $15,000 on FST Wednesday, it was Burleson and Galitti. Galitti. Gonna roll up on the left. Interesting to note. Not only are both drivers from Texas, both drivers both drivers happen to be sponsored by Rad Torque. Both drivers happen to have a Wilson race engine and both drivers happen to have a bruising converters. So other than saying, you know, they are racing in identically prepared rental cars, you got a little Tomball, Texas, versus which Richmond, Texas, both drivers sporting the American chassis. So American cars, Wilson race engines, a bruisey converters, rad torque sponsors, but only one can light up the scoreboard. Galitti's dialed in at 451. Burleson's dialed in at 452. One hun the split in the dial. Six thou the split and reaction time down to the gate we go and it's gonna be Donnie Burleson. 002 at this end of the racetrack, taking two thou at the stripe and goes 453 on the 452. Chris Galitti had a 008 light and goes 451 on the 451. Wednesday, out of the great state of Texas and a great final round with your really good friend Chris, Chris Galitti. Donnie Burleson gonna be our winner tonight on $15,000 Wednesday, woo woo. 
So uh, I want to talk about the final round in a minute, but I want to go back to the semi-final round. You have that John Labus guy that has literally had so much success at the fling events, and you were just nasty against Labus, going perfect in that uh, on the starting line against Labus. Yeah, I rolled a few in the box. I've been hitting it pretty close all day. Yeah, I just stayed off the bump. I zero, zeroed out my bump. Uh, I've been going red because of that. I mean, so that's got me on a bunch of rounds, late rounds lately. So uh, zeroed that out, did my job, did what I needed to do, took the win. Then in that all Texas fair enough final round, you just uh, show Chris Galitti that the uh, trip zip was a mistake and you go 002 on him in that final round. Yeah, I was on it. I, I rode two in <laughs> and I was 002, so I was lucky, I guess, whatever, but uh, it worked out. You know, that uh, that final round, you know, you and Chris are really good friends. Rad on board both cars out of Texas, same engine maker, transmission, all that stuff. You know, not only reaching to a final is so important, but how great is it to be alongside just a really good friend of yours? Oh man, Chris Glenn has been a good mentor for me. Uh, it's like Bart Nelson, uh, all these guys that hang around me. It's been a, it's been just an amazing uh, adventure going through, and they've taught me a lot. So I'm, I'm really lucky to have the friends that I do, and I'm just, it's, it's an humbling sport. Tonight I finally come out on top. So. And, and a lot of people help you to get here. A lot of people here behind you. Yep, uh, all my friends, Canaan, thank you for bringing me down here. Uh, Hunter, all you guys, everybody, thank y'all. Jay, appreciate it. All right, a big round of applause for our winner tonight here on FST Carburetor Wednesday, Donnie Burleson out of Great State of Texas. Donnie, good job, buddy. Thursday's racing action was sponsored by Jeg's Performance and featured a $25,000 big check. Quarterfinal action saw Jeff Sarah make it past Jeff Birdie, Shane Maddox turning back Brian Balducci, Scott Albrecht winning over Scotty Gibson Jr. and Shane Carr advanced on a red light by Wesley Roberts. In the first semi, it was Carr and Albrecht. Who, if memory serves, I believe has already won a hundred grander this year. And is dialing down, he's got a 447. Showing up on that left lane timing board here at Galat. And Scott Albrecht in the S10 pickup truck out of Jackson, New Jersey. The Nitro Fish ride dialed in at 590. Albrecht is in and set. Shane Carr is there. And five thousandths of a second between them in reaction time. Down to the finish line. The winner is going to be Sugar Shane Carr. 21 on the tree, dead on one, ends up 22 thou total. Scott Albrecht was 26 on the tree. Gets to the stripe first, 11 thou, and breaks out 15 thou as he is locked out by Shane Carr's 22 pack. Then it was Sarah and Maddox. It was interesting, both guys were dialed pretty honest. Both dialed down from the round of eight as Shane Maddox and Jeff Sarah will look to be alongside Shane Carr in the final round. Maddox out of Piedmont, South Carolina, the Maddox race cars. House Machine 447. The dial for Shane and 447 in the previous pair worked out for Mr. Carr. Jeff Sierra, 456 the number. Sierra, right side. Shane Maddox, left side. Sierra won a rather large event late in 2020. Both of these competitors, extremely talented. Sarah last in, tree and away. Five thousand the difference at the starting line. Sarah with the better of the two reaction times. Four, five, seven, five for Jeff Sarah. 13 on the tree. Shane Maddox was 18 thou, five thou behind at the rip. And two above, 449, five. So Jeff Sarah and Shane Carr, Jeff Sarah. With that 13 thou reaction time, we'll pick the lane. For the $20,000 from Jags, it was Carr and Sierra. In the right lane, he's been all day. And Shane Carr is fully copacetic with the left side of the racetrack because it's where that kick booty motorsports dragster has been pretty much all day. Shane Carr, Sugar, had 447 on the car in the semifinals. He rolls up here with 451 on the side of that kick booty motorsports dragster. 
Kane out of Florida, Jeff Serra, 456 the dial for Mr. Serra. So Shane Carr and the semis with Scott Albrecht had a big head start for Albrecht on the other side, dialed it down a few here. He's pushed it back to 451. Sarah will be first to leave with $25,000 on the line. Both drivers. Inching forward, car is in. Jeff Sarah is in. Tree drops and away. Six thou gonna separate them on the starting line. Sarah looking over to the left and breaks out by three thousandths of a second. Shane Carr, 20 green, 450 with the two, 452 five on the 451 for Shane Carr. Jeff Sarah had six thou at the starting line, was 14 green, gets to the finish line by 24 thousandths of a second. Breaking out three thousandths of a second. Shane Carr, our winner on Jeg's Thursday, twenty-five thousand dollars. Jeff Sarah had a great run today, but ends up breaking out by three thou here in the final round alongside Shane Carr. So congratulations to Shane, Carrie, Dylan, the whole group coming up from Florida. Shane Carr going to be our winner here on Jeg's Thursday. Friday was the $100,000 bounty at the Rad Torque Systems Spring Fling presented by Optima Batteries, and the day was sponsored by Maytag Silver State Refrigeration. The day began with the Spring Fling Reaction Time Challenge. If a randomly selected driver could go double O, the Fling staff would hand them a $100 bill. Triple O was worth $1,000 cash. In the quarterfinals, Jeremy Popple defeated Matt Dattis, Lee Dixon fell to Jeff Serra, Gary Williams took out Mark Bridgers, and Tim Markaglu sent Cameron Manuel to the trailer. In the semifinals, Markaglu and Serra faced off. 001 on the Christmas tree. They're in the quarters. Serra was 16 on the ball. You have a good memory. Ooh. Markaglu is 004 looking to end Sarah's night he and does. Timmy Markaglu 004 and one above for Timmy. Jeff Sarah 14 green. Then it was Popple and Williams. Nesbitt Racing Engines, Mickey Thompson, VP, McLeod, Jegs. 480 gonna be the dial in. There for Gary Williams. Jeremy Popple, 526 the number for the Firebird out of New York. From the Napa Auto Parts side of the racetrack, he'll be off and away first. Winner here is going to make up one half of the final. Three thousand is the difference right here. It's tight. It's going to be Popple. The door car is going to the final. Sixteen, Look. dead six. That's uh, twenty. For the $100,000 big check on Silver State Refrigeration Friday, it was Mark Aglu and Popple. And everything that goes with winning one of these great events is going to go back to the great state of New York. And you know, Mike, I've been looking at it right now. To this point this weekend, the door cars have been shut out, haven't even made an appearance in the final round. So uh, how fitting would it be if the door cars could roll in here and say, fine, you guys want the other little ones? We're going to go ahead and claim the, the one big one. Take the big one. Jeremy Popple, 526, the dial in the Firebird. Timmy Markaglu, 446. We talked about it earlier. Timmy was 001, 004 the last two rounds. We are off and away. Oh. Red light start for Jeremy Popple by 13,000. Timmy Markaglu is going to be your winner. And going dead on zero. Timmy Markaglu, 11 green, 446 0 on the 446. Winner circle at the conclusion of a as of the conclusion of a Silver State refrigeration, $100,000 to win main event Friday. And we are standing here with the man who is holding the trophy, Timmy Markaglu out of Staten Island, New York. Timmy, the day turned out quite all right for you. You've got the jacket. 
You've got the trophy, and you have got a check for $100,000. Can you put into words right now how this feels? <laughs> it's just a lot of luck. The drivers here forget about it. They're, they're all the best of the best. I was a little lucky, and I had a couple of good runs, and here I am. And I don't, you know, I'm getting all the luck. I can understand that. I can certainly understand that overwhelmed feeling. And when you say you were a little bit lucky, yeah, I'll go with you on that. Because in order to win an event like this, there's a lot of talent out there. you got to have some lucky rounds. But I'm telling you, those last few rounds, you were dead on it down there on the starting line. You had a groove going. Can you tell me, like, rolling in there, how do you keep yourself focused with something like that? After you get past round four, round five, you got to feel for the car. And then, you know, I can't do it loud and beat. <laughs> You know, then you know, you know your, your confidence kicks in, and that, then you know what you're doing. And the car's dialed, and basically. I'll tell you what. One last question. I know right now the emotion is there. This is a big moment. This is a big time. You can't do something like this on your own, right? I mean, you come out here, and I know that we've had an opportunity to talk to wife Barbara before, and and really, she told us a little bit about the family feeling and how much it means for you to be out here hanging out with friends. Who's out here with you to help get you through this? Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to let you soak in the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a huge round of applause for your winner here on a $100,000 Silver State Refrigeration Friday, Tibby Markaglu. Jane Thompson, owner of Silver State Refrigeration, also arranged for a 32-car door car shootout. In the final, it was the husband and wife duo of Brian and Michelle Martell squaring off. Raced their way through a 32-car field. They will be claiming the 10 grand prize. They will be claiming the entry into the Spring Fling Million in 2022. And they are both leading the way for that $500 bonus of the wheel stand. And the thing that's even cooler about ending up in the final is that the ladder changes every round. So it's not right. like, oh, hey, I'm on this side. I'm, oh, like, yeah. It had to shake out a specific way. This is amazing. Husband and wife leading the both of them, you know, one and two in the wheel stand contest. They've already taken all the money. We better see them air it out right here. Yeah. Well, they didn't dial them heads up. Michelle Martell dialed it at 596. Brian Martell dialed it at 584. I think they are certainly racing for uh, kind of bragging rights within the household. Oh, absolutely. Losers cl <laughs> loser cleans the house. From top to bottom. Michelle Martell here on the right side. Brian Martell on the left side. Again, these are the two that brought us donuts this morning, and it's paying off for them. Oh, yeah. Airing it out on the starting line. Away we go. Advantage on the starting line to Brian Martell and Brian is going to go 585 on a 584 with 16 green. And we got Shane Thompson up here. Shane, I think throughout the rounds, Brian Martell consistently put up the best wheel stands out there in that red Camaro. I'll leave it up to you, but there's $500 on the line. Who gets it? Absolutely. Brian did a great job. Gets the win and the extra cash. Good for him. So a $500 bonus for the wheel stands, the way that we all kind of think door car racing should be. Love it. It was beautiful. And Mike? I gotta head downstairs. We got some checks to hand out. The last piece of business to be settled was the Brodick's best package runoff. That matchup Still featured Jarrett Creech and Cody Strickland. Was Cody Strickland, who was one total at one point in the weekend. Are you kidding me? Cody Strickland coming back from the burnout. Jarrett Creech is sitting down here in the water box. Oh, that thing was, I thought he went quiet. Had the door open, I was like, no! Jared Creech in the blacked out, almost murder Nova style ride. He was two total earlier in the week. I think it was like day number one. Round number one. Like 001 dead one. Was Jared Creech. So the two North Carolinians running a home race here, and for Strickland, it is very much a home race here. The family helps operate this place. He has got the pre-stage bulbs lit over on the left side of the racetrack. That's where the dragster of Strickland sits for Jared Creech, the door car here on the right side. Tree drops, and here we go. Oh, 
wow. both of them are double O reaction time. Get down to the finish line, and how about Jared Creech? Double O four, two above, ends up twenty four total. Cody Strickland was double O three, got there first by twenty four thousandths of a second, and breaks out three thou. And the heads are going home with Jared Creech. Congrats to Jared Creech. That was awesome. It's an awesome final. To sit around for hours. Yeah, and they come out in three and four, just like they did the first round the first day. Oh, my goodness. Saturday's 25,000 to win event was sponsored by Wiseco. In the quarterfinals, it was Jerry Brewer beating Bob Kalipsky, Ken Batchelor winning over Brian Balducci, Caroline McCarty winning over Tim Thomas, and Tommy Plott over Brian Martel. For the first semi, it was Plot and McCarty. In his time in the left lane, swapped to the right, put Caroline back in the left. Dial for Caroline, 604. Tommy Plot dialed in 464, and here we go. Just a 3,000 split between them in reaction time, getting down to the stripe, and Tommy Plot goes 19 on the tree, and 464 on a 464 to get to the stripe first by 13 thousandths of a second and win it. Then it was Brewer and Bachelor. We'll be leaving first. Brewer is in and we're away. Ken Bachelor is late, 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 and Brewer makes him pay 14 green, two above for Jerry Brewer. Ken Bachelor was 51 on the green light start and one above and was still 21 thou behind at the stripe. So we're gonna have a Jerry Brewer. Tommy Plot, final round. In the last final of the event, it was Brewer versus Plot. You get rid of half of them every single time that you send them down the track. Yeah, that's true. All right, so Jerry Brewer, dialed 442 out of North Carolina. Ken Batchelor dialed 465, or excuse me, 464. Jerry Brewer dialed 443. Tommy Plot dialed 464. Plot here on the near side. Big Brew over on the left side, and Mike, they're in and set. Plot off and away first. Jerry Brewer's 002 plot is 15, and Jerry Big Brewer, 002, taking 002 to be a hun above as Jerry Brewer is going to be your winner. Down here in the winner's circle with our winner, Wiseco Performance Products Saturday here at the Fling. Jerry Big Brewer, a very emotional guy. Man, that trophy just means so much to you. It does. It does, man. You don't, you don't know how hard I've been working trying to get this thing. I've been to the Fling, every Fling they had. I try to make it. If my car's broke, I try to find something to drive. If I don't have nothing to drive, I watch. Whatever I got to do. But this is one of the best races of the whole year for me. I, I don't care if it's not a million dollars, but it, 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 it's a million dollars to me. It's a million dollars to me, so. Yep. Hey, we can see the, the emotion and how much this means to you, but I just want to talk about the final. You get like some guy, I mean, he's like, Tom, I'm, I, I think he's been okay a little bit, Tommy Plot, and you go 002 on him in that final. Yeah, well, I was 500 uh, two rounds before, and when I rolled up there, I saw that the, the tree was a little lighted you know, more than I had been noticed because I hadn't been this far all week. And uh, I just rolled it back where I was 500. That's why I said, when it comes on, I closed my eyes and it left, and I said, oh yeah, we're on a roll now. That's it. And the car has just been phenomenal. I got to thank Brett Nesbitt, uh, Undercover Chassis, uh, Bill and Lee, all the guys that got something to do with this car, my family, my wife especially for putting up with me. I mean, you don't, I go, I'm telling you, she puts up with a lot, but she knows that this means a lot to me, and hey, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I mean, I just, I really appreciate this. You guys just don't realize how much this means to me. I've been struggling for years with my back. I've had hip surgery this past year, and I still come because I, I just, I love to win. There's no feeling like it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can deer hunt, whatever you want to do, but there's no feeling like winning this right here. Woo! It's, it's, it's none. That's all I got.
got to say. Man, so well said. Our winner tonight, Jerry Brewer, dude, that was awesome. Congratulations, thanks for everything. And man, we love the emotion. And man, our winner today on Saturday, Jerry Brewer, another one, woo! And with that, another fling was successfully in the books. Beyondo and Seibel wish to thank each and every competitor, pit crew member, and staff member that made this Galat event a success. The duo paid out over $325,000 in prize money and gave away over $53,000 in manufacturer giveaways. The promoters look forward to seeing you soon as the inaugural Summer Fling comes to National Trail Raceway this August.